What's going on guys? Welcome back to Boosted Motorsports. So behind me, I've got this Dodge Challenger Hellcat that we are turning essentially into a Demon 170 clone. So if you guys haven't seen this car before, we bought this car. If you guys haven't seen this car before, we picked up this car and it had fire damage and we stripped it, cleaned it, repainted it. And now it is looking fresh and it needs an engine. But before we get to the engine, we actually uh, are rebuilding the engine. It's gonna make a ton of jam, but there's some things that I got to kind of get to and uh, get sorted out. One thing is the brake lines. I don't know if you guys can see it. It still shows remnants of being in a fire. So I wanna replace those. So we'll rip those out of there and also the fuel line. So I got a bunch of go fast goodies that I want to show you guys that are, we're gonna put on on the car. But in order to do that, I do have to fix the wheel alignment. So this thing, when it's had whatever incident it had, looks like it spun around and hit a curb or something because one of the original five spoke Hellcat wheels was completely tacoed and we removed it. And we have this 300 C wheel on here, but the wheel, even though this knuckle was completely busted, we ended up replacing the knuckle at least so we had something to roll on, but I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is like, headed on this direction is completely towed in and there's some bent pieces on there. So I want to put it up in the air. We're going to drop the cradle more than likely. Not that I really want to, but I do have another cradle, but it's also from a wrecked car. So it's like kind of which one's the better of the two. I want to see if maybe this cradle is just fine and we'll just put the control arm on it and see if we get a better alignment than this because something's a little off right now. And uh, we also have to take off the exhaust to get the cradle out. So we might as well get that done. I am gonna be upgrading a bunch of the suspension components, the bushings, control arms, all that stuff. But for now, I at least want it to have a straight, somewhat straight alignment on it, not like completely angled in so that when I show you guys the wheels that I picked up for it, it'll actually look somewhat presentable and won't be, you know, towed in like crazy. So let's put this thing up. Let's see what we see and uh, assess what we need to replace and go from there. Okay, so we've got the car up in the air and it might be even more evident than ever. You guys can see it like that. But this lower control arm, and even the one that I have, hopefully you guys can see that. <laughs> it's definitely not good. Um, this is bent, so that needs to be changed. But then the one that I was gonna replace it with from the other wrecked vehicle is also bent. So I don't know that it's any better. Um, also our CV, we might as well get this out of here. It's been chilling in here for a while and it is cooked. so. Can see there it's all exploded but let's go ahead and pop this wheel off um all this stuff is kind of loose together because me and my buddy steve just kind of slapped it together when we initially got this thing so there might be some other clues in here as why this is not completely straight i mean this is definitely a significant portion of it but i don't know that that will change the toe unless this i can't remember maybe we didn't change this piece i'll have to compare see if maybe this got a little buggered up maybe this isn't supposed to have so many bends in it i'll have to check that as well so let me investigate we'll pop the wheel off and then we can kind of mess with some stuff there's also a cam bolt here so that could probably affect our toe quite a bit depending on whether this is pushed out or sucked in but let's take the wheel off and start getting some of this crap out of here Well, you guys, I took off the exhaust. That thing is freaking heavy to take off by yourself. The, I don't know how much that weighs, but it's quite a bit. I just found the reason why this transmission exploded, you guys. So I had to take off the exhaust to get off this heat shield. Look at this carrier bearing right here. It has been slinging all sorts of crap for a while before it failed. And look at where the bearing goes. This thing is just as loose as a goose, like look at that. So this thing was slapping around, which is what led to the excess probably vibration and ultimately exploding the transmission. So it wasn't a trans, well, I mean the transmission failed, but it was because this carrier bearing failed 
and cause the transmission to fail. There it is, you guys. There is the culprit. You can see all of the evidence right there from this thing giving up and the boots torn. Like this thing gave up well before the transmission went. That is crazy. Comment down below what you guys think. That is the reason. Okay, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna drain the fluid out of the differential so that I can pop out this CV. I actually have another one that we can throw in here for now um, just to keep it sealed up, but I know if we take it out right now, it's gonna puke everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead, drop the drain bolt. We'll drop and drain all the fluid in there. Okay, so let's see what kind of health this oil is in. Hopefully it's decent. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> It looked a little junky at first, but at least there's fluid in it. I couldn't tell if those were globs or just thick oil. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> let's let that drain. Okay, it's actually a few days later, you guys, and I... And this piece is really beat up, so this lower control arm. I was kind of debating, you know, whether we should try to change this cradle or not, but... I think at the moment I am going to just change the lower control arm and we'll see because this thing is severely beat up so it might fix most of our issues. If this thing still looks really crooked afterwards then uh, I'll drop that. The reason I don't want to change it right now is because I'm going to try to get all upgraded bushings for the entire cradle. So I might as well just start <laughs> assembling pieces that uh, are going to make up for one good cradle because even that cradle over there. Like I mentioned, I think the uh, control arms over there, that one was in a wreck and that control arm over there is bent too. So there's no really telling if the other cradle is gonna be any better than this one really. So this definitely crumpled all through here. And you can also see like here's all dented in. And yeah, she's just bent. One interesting thing I did find though, is see this opening here? This one's kind of like hollow on the front. And on the back, I don't know if they tried to like lighten it up for the Hellcat, but the other one is identical except for it doesn't have that hollowed out portion. I don't know that it'll make a difference. And again, I'm gonna try to get upgraded arms. So we'll see what happens there, but I'm gonna bring this down, take this spindle off for a minute here. I'm gonna take this bent piece off. We'll put on this one, see if anything else looks bent. And then uh, we'll put the spindle back on or the knuckle and we'll see how this whole thing looks. Okay, so everything is out of there and here is the control arm. You guys can probably see how tweaked that one is. So hopefully that was the culprit and if I kind of square it up with that one, yeah. So definitely really, really bent. So hopefully that will clean things up. So I do have a half shaft. I'm trying to decide whether I should put it in or not because it's uh, a scat pack one and it's not quite as beefy as the Hellcat one. I don't know. I might just throw it in just since I have it, just so that if uh, if we don't get to it in time, we can still move the vehicle around. So I might just pop it in just so that it's in there. But let's go ahead. We gotta throw all this garbage back on here now and uh, we'll see how she looks. Well, at this point, you guys, we're pretty much on path to be replacing every single arm. Because even though you think like this arm might be okay, <laughs> I suspected it was bent. Look how much bent this one is compared to this one. So might not seem it at first glance, but this is another one, same arm. But look, if I push this one to the ground, it actually lifts itself off the ground there. And this one is laying flat. So this one is completely bent. So let me go ahead, throw this one on and see if that fixes things. All right, so me and my buddy Jay ended up getting a lot of this stuff on here. We ended up replacing all the arms. We just said, screw it. And every time we took off an arm, every arm was slightly bent. But now it looks like she's hanging pretty straight. There's one adjustment here. So we got one cam bolt here. 
right, so we are gonna be, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna end up getting all probably poly bushings or I'm gonna get the uh, lockout kit. Either way, this thing's gonna be coming down a few times and I wanna get all those aftermarket control arms with the uh, stiffer bushings, so. But for now, I just at least want it to be able to roll straight and look proper, so let's uh, bring this down and uh, I have to, we might try getting this parking brake hooked into here because this one is here. I think it's way less of a pain in the ass to put it into there. Also, I didn't put in my half shaft because the one that I had was totally different. I thought it was the scat pack, which I thought was also the same, but apparently it was totally different. So uh, right now I need to look for a half shaft, but we're probably gonna end up getting built shafts anyway. So just another thing to add to the list. All right, so we ended up changing out a bunch of the suspension components and now the wheel is actually straight. The offset is uh, a lot more sunken in than the factory Hellcat wheels just because this is a uh, just base model 300C wheel, but at least our wheel is now straight. But again, all this rear subframe stuff, rear cradle is gonna end up coming out. I actually did find a rear cradle that has upgraded arms on it locally. So somebody said they went to a four link setup. So they have a rear cradle that has all the upgraded arms already on it, at least like probably 75% of what we would do to it. So I might end up going to pick that up. Um, but yeah, at least this is straight so that I can show you guys the wheels mounted on this thing um, in the, one of the next episodes. What we're gonna do right now though is focus on the interior and getting some of this stuff sorted out. Could technically leave the panels in there, but, and also the curtain airbags, they got a little crispy, or not even crispy, I wanna say, but just a little bit of smoke on them. But I'm gonna replace them, cause I just, uh, I'd rather have all that stuff for peace of mind. So, I've already got that one kind of peeled back there. And this one, this is what I mean, like it's probably fine, but just to be on the safe side down here, I'm gonna just replace them. And I'm also gonna replace all the stuff that goes along here. We've got our new headliner, and hopefully in this episode, I also should have the new sunroof, because the old sunroof, um, it had the rain gutters where they got a little bit of heat. I also got one of these things. Let me show you this, some of the stuff that's on the floor. So I threw this here, because this was all melted. The old, if I go back here in the trunk, the old overhead console was toasted as well. So this was the old overhead console. As you can see, that thing is definitely in rough shape and seen better days. So I just picked up one of those. I got it off eBay as well, and that thing showed up. Those are all, this is my parts bin right now, you guys. So a lot of the stuff is over here, but I've got all the pieces. That's the brand new overhead console. I'm gonna replace the back deck too. There's not really anything wrong with that one, but maybe it has some smoke in it, so it might stink later. So I figured why not? I've got our mirror wiring harness, so I'm gonna run that. And the wire harness that connects the overhead console, it's actually on the headliner. So all that's gonna be ready to go. Once we get the sunroof in there, then we can put all that. But let's go ahead. I'm gonna peel out these seats so it's easier to work. And then I'm gonna peel out the back seats, change all that stuff, change out our airbags. It's gonna be quite a bit of stuff. And uh, just get this thing prepped for when our sunroof arrives and then we can button up the headliner stuff. Okay, give you guys a little progress report. So back seats are out. I took out all the old junk. So, well not junk, but just all the old stuff. Really isn't anything wrong with it other than a little bit of smoke on it. So I've got the new curtain airbags both in here. I got the new rear deck lid on there. I fixed all the wiring. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, <laughs> I, I gotta give them, I gotta give them heck. Uh, my buddy ended up uh, snipping a few wires that we didn't need snipped so ended up fixing those so we're back in order all those guys there and what else I got this in I changed out these little brackets and I got our bags in here so I have to put in the hardware but I did just get word that our sunroof showed up so let's go ahead hop in the Hellcat Ram and go pick up our sunroof um, that way we can have that here and I should be able to button a lot of this stuff up. So um, when we get back, I'm going to go ahead and just vacuum everything again, just since there's a little bit of just uh, 
dirt and stuff and then we can put in our plastics our seat and then maybe a, a sunroof today so let's get going all right guys we're in the hell ram so we're just in auburndale about to get to the parts spot and this bicycler is trying to get run over it looks like <laughs> but um, some people are asking about the check engine light that's on. So this is on the 93 octane tune and it's normally on, on the E85, but since we're not racing for a little while, I've just been running on the uh, 93 octane and it's just a sensor code that we have to uh, address. So um, yeah, something wrong with the actual truck, but I know there was a couple of videos I made where people were like, why are you checking the light on? And yeah, it's literally just uh, a sensor code that's um, not adjusted on my 93 tune that normally is on my E85 tune. But anyways, here we are, Phoenix Parts. Let's get our sunroof. All right, so we picked it up. <laughs> I swear I've had the worst luck. This is the only one that they have. And the glass is hanging off it and there was tape holding glass on. So the track is busted. So we're gonna have to try and extract this and make one good one out of two. So we'll see how she goes. Let's get it back to the shop and see what we can manage. Comment down below if you guys wanna see more content of driving. I have a feeling everybody's probably gonna say yes, but like this thing is so much fun to drive. I don't drive it enough is the problem. I just keep building. That's just like not even a quarter throttle, you guys, just for reference. And we're up to highway speeds just like that. All right, so it is back. We're gonna have to mess with this and see if we can't transfer the track over because yeah, that's definitely busted actually. Look, like that's, that's supposed to attach right there. That arm is supposed to attach to that and it is snapped right off. So, I don't know, we'll see what we can manage, but that one is no bueno. For now, let's clean up this big mess and get all the parts that at least we have in there. We can worry about sunroof after. So I'm gonna put all those panels in, put all the hardware in for, your, for the curtain bags, and we'll see how far we get. Okay, so it has turned into madness in here, you guys. So let me get you guys caught up to speed. So we've got the headliner here, and the reason why the headliner's here, because I had to plug in the headliner harness to be able to plug in our center or overhead console so that I could control the sunroof. And then I've got both sunroof mechanisms on the ground here, and I've been trying to make one good one out of it. So like I mentioned, the one that we picked up from the scrap yard, the junkyard, was damaged and they said see what you can do with it and we'll kind of just give you some sort of discount or whatever. But this thing is severely damaged you guys. So I managed to take apart parts that are not supposed to be taken apart. So these little guys, and you can see there that's snapped right off of there. These are not supposed to be removed, but I managed to figure out how this comes off. You can see there, there's a chunk of that slider right there. It's missing. So a big chunk is missing there. Some of see how there's like four posts right there. On this one, there's only three right there. The other one's right there. And the back of the slider's all busted off. But I managed to extract these sliders. This is what bolts to the glass. I extracted them from there. And then I also took off this piece. So these are where that was. That was busted off of that one over there. Both arms were busted right off. You can see them right here actually. So both of them are right here. But this one on this little wind deflector thing is there. This was derailed. I had to put this back in the track, the little uh, sunshade thing. And now I think I might be able to put the glass back on here, put the screws back in it, and this might actually be potentially ready to go in the car. So. If you guys are wondering again why we're changing it, I think I've said it a few times, but this was all melted. The sunshade was all kind of uh, heat warped and burnt. You can see there, it's definitely seen better days. So that's why we're changing it. And I might, cross your fingers boys, but I might have one that works.
All right guys, after hours of messing with the sunroof, I finally got it where I'm happy. So not only did I have to align the track and everything underneath with the car, then you have to, even though I had the glass in, you have to adjust the glass because otherwise if it starts catching here, if it feels too much resistance on the motor, it'll just clip it out. So now I've got it, you can see there, that's in the closed position. If I go over here, I don't know if this thing might have just timed out, if I put in vent, there's the vent position. And then if I hit, I don't know which way is which. So there's the open position. I know this is very elementary stuff you guys, but for having a car that never worked, it's kind of exciting for me. So, and then if we go fully closed, then she comes all the way to the front. Probably have to grease the slides, but yeah, there you go. She's perfect. So that is one more thing just out of the way. So um, I do have to figure out one thing. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but whatever harness I got for the dash, this has this style plug on it, but you'll notice here, it doesn't have the microphones. So this might be an older headliner because some of the older cars, like uh, I think up to 2016, they had the mirror had the microphones in it and not the headliner. So I still have the old harness from our original headliner. So I'm gonna have to figure out if I can pin that in or if I'm gonna have to actually take off this harness, but this harness is glued to the headliner. So I gotta sort that out, but it's uh, late here. I really wanted to get that done, but we accomplished it. So one more thing out of the way, boys. But once we figure out this, then we can put the headliner in and then this thing might be ready for a windshield because I've been waiting to put the sunroof and the headliner and all that in before doing the windshield. And then the other thing too is back here, I have to just double check that that's all plugged in because I got some wires. It's getting dark in here that we don't have a, a sunroof that's open, but back here, I'm gonna plug in my stuff for here. So I'm gonna plug all this in, double check all my hardware, double check all my work connect these rear drains because that would not be good so connect these rear drains make sure everything is good there now we should be able to slide the headliner in here right from the front and install our center console and have a headliner in here for once so most of the interior should be just about completed on this thing for once which would be uh, pretty nice but i say that completed but i haven't showed you some of the race goodies we have so at least most of this stuff will be all freshened up, but we might have some uh, race seats. Uh, I don't know, just to, just throwing out there. Might be some race seats for this thing, which we'll be doing here shortly. Okay, so just about to put the headliner in and I did install clear tubing. This was the old stuff, kind of looked a little nasty. So put brand new clear tubing up to the rain channels. So there's another one there going up to the rain channel for our sunroof. So now let's see about sliding the headliner in straight through and seeing if we can get it in there. All right, so we ended up getting most of our interior in here. I'm still missing a few pieces that I gotta source out, but check this out, you guys. Turn up the lights here. So we got all this new headliner in here. Our sunroof is in here. I still gotta clean it. It's got all sorts of hand marks and whatnot. I think even my forehead marks from holding it up by myself. <laughs> but anyways, it's in here. I still gotta get a grab handle for that side. I gotta find a A-pillar cover. I had one A-pillar cover that I had purchased our sun visors in here. I got to clean them; they're a little bit dirty. And our overhead console, it's in here, so that's now all good as well. And I have one grab handle, but I'm missing some hardware for it, so that's the other part there. But uh, yeah, a lot more progress. All of our wiring is in here too, and we could probably put the windshield in now. And I do have to buy one of these pieces here. I'm missing this as well. Um, when I bought the dash, it didn't have that piece, so I got to get that trim piece as well. So. A lot of little things. Also, you'll notice I didn't put the seat back in because I do have some race stuff that's gonna go in there. So we're gonna have to test fit it. And um, I wanna see how that all fits, make our brackets and stuff for the race seat before ultimately, this is just gonna be my daily driver seat. But when we're gonna go to the track or we're gonna do some dry, drag and drive stuff, who knows, maybe I'll even leave the race seat in there. It's pretty damn comfortable. I already, uh, I already sat in the race equipped seat and it's really, really comfortable. So who knows if I'll maybe just leave it in there most of the time since it's gonna be me driving it and I don't really have to move it around. So I'm gonna wrap up this video here. This episode's been pretty long and now I'm to the point where we can start doing some other stuff. I wanna do a go fast 
parts episode for you guys. And let me show you guys over here. Actually, we've got a lot of stuff over here. So this is the palette for the 426 three liter Whipple Hemi that's gonna go in the Dakota. All this stuff, I haven't even unwrapped it yet. But right there is gonna be our built 6.2 that's going into the Hellcat. So I've got the engine on the stand. I've got all sorts of cool parts. I'll show you guys in the next episode. Huge lower ATI, all sorts of cool go fast parts. But that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I'm gonna get this out for you guys. Lots and lots of content on the way, you guys. Um, it's just crazy. Between this, the two Hellcat trucks, this 426 blown Hemi truck, we got so much on the go right now, but it's exciting. And I also probably have some news for you guys on the SST. So all kinds of stuff, you guys. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next video.